Hello, people of the interwebs! Welcome back to my Let's Play of Eternalize for Orgognica. Really good old games no one cares about. I am Wandergirl108. I, uh... I am back with the second episode of this. Yeah, will do, Alina. Thanks. I've never actually read that bit of dialogue before, I don't think. Anyway, yeah, um... Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, I can be set to dit sometimes. Okay, you can run by using the directional buttons and holding down triangle, or you can just use the analog stick. <laughs> oh, I put in an annotation about that too because I thought I was just doing it unconsciously, but no, it's just that I'm kind of used to using the analog stick from, I don't know, later games. Okay, so we have a new location here, the Lost Forest. We get one tiny bit of dialogue before we enter. <laughs> well, what was she gonna do to help you, man? I mean... You, you're the Eternal Eyes and you have your puppets, you don't need her. She'd probably just slow you down, actually. Okay, so we got a better sword. Very nice. We don't have anything besides that. And... Let's just go in, I guess. Now this is the area where you start getting jewels, which I look forward to showing you. Also notice that it's raining in here. Again, odd bit of dialogue I think was mistranslated. Sorry about my voice being subdued in the last video and probably in this one too. Um, for one thing, again, I am living in an apartment. I don't want to... I'm kind of wary of bothering people, even though, you know, people do that. <laughs> uh, also, the sound capture stuff was telling me during the last video that I was actually blasting the mic most of the time. Okay, so this is a Fuwawa. Um, low defense. This is a Pikuchi. Low magic defense. And these are Muscu, of course. Um, okay, so... Another little quirk about me that's not really part of the game. I really don't like making creatures fight their own kind. Like, I do this in Pokemon, too. Like, I, I don't let the same creature fight, you know, an opponent. I, I don't let it be the same Pokemon against each other, so I'm not gonna use Muskew against Muskew. What I normally do is I have Luke take care of Muskew, and Muskew take care of Kikuchi, and Powen take care of Fuwawa. Again, I've learned my lesson recently, so... I'm gonna have Luke take care of the Muskew, and then I'm gonna split the Fuwawa and Kikuchi between Muskew and Powen. You see, one of the reasons I really love this game is, like, there are creatures, there are monsters that, like, resemble things that, you know, you can name. Like, you know, Powin is a floating sheep. And then there are creatures that don't look like anything you can name. Like, for instance, Muskew. It's a pink blob. And are those its ears or its hands? Maybe both. <laughs> So yeah, that's it's one of the things that makes this Ergognica is that it's it's a game that existed. Also, notice after the magic casting screen, the rain turns black for a little while. Not sure why that is. Always noticed it though. Anyway, yeah, it's the thing about Ergognica is that this game was made in a time when things didn't have to make sense, you know. Also, since we're in a forest now. 
We get trees, obviously, and of course they're places you can't stand. We also get hills. And if you look at the corners of these hills right here, because they aren't slopes, you actually can't stand or on or walk through them. They're basically like other tree trunks. So that's kind of annoying. Uh, da -da -da. Being all even and stuff. As even as possible. Um. What am I doing? Sorry. <laughs> now I've mentioned in the past, like, well, in the last video, that I've already done a few takes of this Let's Play and scrapped them, basically. I haven't gotten past the Lost Forest. So, whatever happens after this area is untested recording territory. But, it was at around this time, usually some point in the forest, when I realized that the gameplay in this game is actually really repetitive. <laughs> Born. Like, it's the same. Every level is the same basic thing. You know, it's a turn-based RPG dungeon. The monsters change, sure, and you can, like, change your equipment and change your monsters. Kind of. Um, but... Oh, don't... No, 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 you... Ugh. Ugh. I hate when they do that. So annoying. So, yeah, as I was saying, gameplay in this game, actually really samey, like it's the same throughout. I didn't actually notice that, though, until I started trying to do a Let's Play of it. Which, I guess is a point in the game's favor that I never noticed that it was just the same thing continuously, until I tried to commentate over it. But it does make for some difficulty doing the Let's Play. So, after we get through this level and figure out the jewels thing, I'm gonna explain further what I'm trying to say. My idea that I had. Um, in the meantime, I'll say a thing I kind of sort of almost said last time and then forgot. <laughs> also, what are those things? Are they slugs, or are they just other things that don't have to be things? <laughs> also, you can skip the player turn enemy turn screams, and I'm gonna be doing that from now on. Sorry I made you all sit through that the whole time. Ah, you stupid treasure chest breaking. Wee, bouncy bouncy! <laughs> At this point in the game, magic tends to be stronger than melee. Um, that'll kind of change in the future. It, it kind of depends on how you raise your thing, I guess. Oh, and, um... Powan's magic, if you'll look, PW there, it says 14, and for Muskew it's 16, and it's the same basic magic. 
So that's an instance, uh, instance of specialized magics having different strengths. But that's kind of dumb, to be honest. Still kills it though. And he's so happy! Don't do it. Thank you. Anyway, thing I was almost... Uh, thing I wanted to say before. Music in this game. Absolutely love it. I don't have jewels. Absolutely love it. Amazing music. It is impossible to get the soundtrack for this game anywhere, as far as I can tell. Okay, that's Pink Beast. Green Wisdom, White Wisdom, Yellow Beast, and a t-shirt. <laughs> Yay! The XP is split evenly. Like, for clearing a dungeon stage. It's split evenly. Okay. Ba ba ba. Jewels. And here we get to the evolution. This evolves... The first evolution can happen at level 3 or higher. The second can happen at level 8 or higher, I believe. I think the third can happen at level 15 or higher. And it can do one more. There are actually a couple of paths any given puppet can take in terms of evolution. I'm gonna go with the one I always go with just because it's always worked for me. And now we have a card knight, which is still named Powan. And also, this becomes Otogi, which is still named Muski. Yeah, you, you have to go back and change the names just to make them like the species. They have that as like a separate option, but still. And what else did we get? Oh. Okay, something dumb about the pink jewels that doesn't apply to any of the others. Sometimes they'll tell you either you can teach this puppet magic or increase its status. You won't find out until after you give it the jewel. Can actually learn learn magics. Come on, yes. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, that's everything. And also for equipment, we now have an accessory, which I'm going to give to Ah, Card Knight needs it. Puppets get accessories. Luke gets armor and weapon, and they just get generic accessories. Okay, so that's all there is to say about that. Next dungeon. <clears throat> As I was saying, the soundtrack for this game is amazing, impossible to get it anywhere. Like, you know how, like, for most PS1 games, if you put them in a computer, it'll, like, read them? Yeah, it can't read any of the tracks on this disc. I've tried it. I also can't find it anywhere on the internet. Because... Well, I guess no one bothered making a Wikipedia page about this game, so why would they bother making a soundtrack? So that's annoying. And there are three of these, so I'm gonna have Luke be the equalizer here, as always. These things... Called Mushini. These are called uh, Pio, I believe. Yes. Now, even though Otogi isn't a Muskyu anymore, it was, and I'm still kind of averse to thing. So I'm gonna have Otogi take care of the Pio and Card Knight take care of the Muskyu. 
Now, normally I don't evolve Card Knight beyond Card Knight because the melee power for Card Knight is actually really high. It can like kill really high level things in like one strike, it's amazing. Atogi I do evolve two more times, um, usually. <laughs> this thing's attack anim animation is funny. <laughs> it gets really angry and then it disappears and appears over your head. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> uh, okay. Alright, I said everything to say. And now, it's time to tell you my idea. See, I started making these videos. Ergognica, really good old games no one cares about, because I wanted to make a point. The point being that, you know, old games are better than modern games, generally. And I wanted to explain why with some of my favorite games. This channel very quickly devolved into just a general Let's Play channel of me doing, you know, my favorite games, but still just doing basic let's plays of them. Now I have several. Um, you also get a magic for evolving. Um, why do I always love Camo? Oh, because it's Ranger's Fork. Oh, also, a togi is one of the things that can only strike from a distance with like basic attack. Anyway, God, I, <laughs> I am so ADD. You know, I get so distracted so easily. Anyway, <laughs> the magic animation is funny too. <gasps> Ooh, nice. Anyway. So yeah, I, I started Ergognica to make a point, I ended up just doing a general Let's Play channel of retro games, but, you know, just a Let's Play channel. That's all this is. And that wasn't what I intended. Um, it's just kind of how I ended up going. So, I actually have done Let's Plays of several games and not really explained why they demonstrate, you know, old games superiority support superiority to modern games so what i'm gonna do is every area of this game is gonna be one video obviously that's why these videos are so long hopefully it won't be as long as the last one um so i'm gonna do that and in each area after this one i'm going to go through each of the games I've already done Let's Plays of, one per video, in the order I've uploaded them, and explain what I should have said while I was actually doing Let's Plays of those games. So, in the next area, I'm going to be talking about King's Thieves Adventure, for example. See that? Right there. One hit. Poof. Awesome. And in the next area, I'm going to be talking about uh, Threads of Fate, which I failed very miserably at showing off. I should not have tried. To do that second. Like, I knew not to do it first, but I shouldn't have even tried to do it second, being my favorite game and everything. Um... And, 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 yeah, and so on. I'm not sure which will run out. Games I've done or areas in this game. Um, not sure which will run out first. Probably games I've done. But, no, I'll do that for as long as I can. noise it makes is also really satisfying to hear for some reason. Um, let's see, 87, 96. Yeah, you can probably stand to attack this just to 
Oopsie, ranged attack. Um. All right, yeah, that works out pretty well. all the treasure chests all over the field. It's so nice when you've cleared a stage and then just get a bunch of items. I find. Some people might like to just gather them as they happen. Which I guess is safer. But, you know, I, I like to wait for the end and just get all those satisfying hoof noises in a road like that. It, it's like, it's literally like something is crumbling into dust. Which is awesome. Is that Moshini crying? I've never- I always thought they were smiling for some reason, but this one looks really sad. Aww. Oh well. Bye bye <laughs> Yay, level up! When it doesn't really matter anymore. Well, yes it does. Ooh, armor for Luke. Okay, white beast. White wisdom. White beast. Pink holy. Ooh, that's Muscus. Green beast. And. Green holy. And now you get to see the celebration animations of the new things. Yeah, you can skip that too. <laughs> kind of. Armor. And jewels. Yeah, see, there are magic that just, like, change effect. Hard cure. It's like cure, that, like, gives MP to another creature. Um... Also, I like to keep a pink holy jewel and a red power jewel on standby, just in case. Oh, look! Now those colored circles that you keep seeing appear and disappear, every time the puppet evolves, it takes another jewel to make it evolve again. So it took one to evolve the first time, and it'll take two the second time, and they have to be like a certain two. Um, the path I usually take for Muscu is a nice consecutive thing. It's, you know, white, and then white, then red, and then white, and then red, then yellow. But that's not gonna matter for a little while. Again, I, I like to give Muscu, or the original Muscu, the magics, and then Card Knight gets the melee. And here we have some blue Muscu. I think they're called Moose Moose. <laughs> the names are funny too for these things. Um, yep, Moose Moose. This is a jackal. And this is a bug beast. Really simple names. There are some humanoid things in the future. Like there's this one really dumb looking. Thing. And its name is Justin. And I, I can't help but feel like that might have been like one of the developers' names. Um, if I recall correctly, I usually have Luke take care of the bug beast. So I'll do that.
and they like gave it the name to a really dumb looking puppet just as like a jab at one of their co-workers or something, I don't know. So game developers used to be fun too, like they used to have an actual sense of humor. Like if you watch the behind the scenes clip in the first Ratchet and Clank game for the PS2, and then in the subsequent Clank games, if you go to the Insomniac Museums, you get, like, commentary from the makers about what goes on in the office and just some, like, slapstick jokes that they make offhand. And it seemed like they, would ha they had a lot of fun making games back in the day, and now everything's just... I'm conflicted. Do I make a Togi kill a moose moose? Uh, no, no, I will not. Okay. I think AP is attack power. Terma. I don't normally use these. I'm gonna demonstrate it right now to show why not. Of course, it's probably gonna work. Ah. Uh, it misses. Like, 99% of the time. It's incredibly pointless. And yeah, are those its ears or its arms? <laughs> The effects for the status changing magics are pretty cool looking though. It's too bad I almost never get to see them. <laughs> uh, this is gonna take forever. I am so sorry. Is that the one I tried to attack before or was it the other? I'll never know. Well, I'll know when I go back and review this. So yeah, even talking about my plans for future episodes, I still am out of things to say at this point. <laughs> but like I said, you know, that's kind of a point in the game's favor. I didn't realize how incredibly samey the game was throughout, throughout until I tried commentating over it. Alright, let's try a real magic. I like Kim all best because for the low power um, magics, it's relatively high strength and it also has a range of four while well, most have a range of three. So I usually go with that. And always with the black brain. I don't know if that was an intended effect. Kind of doubt it for some reason. Oh. Uh. See these bug beasts? I think they have six movement points, and obviously they're flying creatures, not that it matters in the forest. Luke has four. So of course when one's about to die and decides to run away, it can run away. No, I don't want to use green. Uh, let's use a different one. Nebulas, same as Whisper. I don't know if there are like elemental resistances among puppets. Presumably these are all puppets, even though the magical puppets have been. Yeah, they're very inconsistent with whether or not magical puppets are part of the general world or not, which I'll show you another example of that later. Um. But yeah, I don't know if there's like elemental weaknesses 
or something? In relation to thing? Sometimes it seems like there might be, and then sometimes it seems like there isn't. So I, I, I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. I'm back here, you stupid bug with fire wings. And the other magic we have at our disposal, just to show you, Illu. Sends the enemy into a different dimension of space and eliminates them. Sounds impressive, right? It's really not. Yep. Didn't even do as much damage as the last spell. Alright, kill the blue lump. Well, that was dumb. Are you trying to run away from me or are you trying to die? Also, why do they have arms and feet? Like hands and feet? Oh well. Who cares? It's a video game. It's not supposed to make sense. That's why this is a good game. Because there's stuff in it that doesn't make sense. Odd reasoning, I know, but. It, it's... It's just how I think of things. For instance, I've, um... I've actually been playing Dark Souls lately. I'm just gonna go with Tim Allen again. Which is like one of the most modern games I've ever played, to be honest. It's like a bigger and more expansive Venetica, which I've also played. Um... She sees something. Oh, look at that! And then pretty evenly. And like, I like it, mostly. And there are things in it that don't make sense, and for those, I love it. Like, there are some pretty original features in it. But just the fact that it tries to look real instead of going for blatantly not real, like, say, this game, it, it's kind of off putting actually. Just like the lack of- I guess the lack of color, because the real world doesn't normally have the bright vivid colors of a cartoon. Kind of by definition of a cartoon. <laughs> Alright, just gotta kill this one last thing. I think... I think I can get to it. Yes. Also, attacks can miss, and other magics besides stats changing. Magics can miss. I don't know... I I'm not entirely sure what determines one way or the other. Wisdom and blue power. Yay! Celebrations! Body, 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 body. Now, if Otogi was level 8, I would be able to evolve it right now, but I can't. Um, I'm just gonna teach him magics. The green magics aren't offensive, they're either stats changing or, like, healing, which is nice because, you know, green. Or it makes sense. And again, I'm giving all the magic initially to Musku because- er, Togi. Will this teach you magic? Yes! Nice. And pink is, like, random. Pink is just crazy random. I think you are an Exgeon, which is, like, a high-level- relatively high-level magic. High power. 
which I will show you. And I think, I think this is the boss battle. Yes, there are boss battles in this game. Epic music. Oh, look, a talking thing. So I have to kill you before you'll pass on the message. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. This river is not crossable, obviously. Magics, however, if I can get one here. Magics can cross it. As can like ranged attacks, the creatures that do that. But I'm gonna save that for later. This thing is called Satapio. It has some accessories, unlike most things. And, um, yeah, that you're reading that right, 210 HP. That's because it's a boss fight. You can still get to Satapio later, it just won't have that much help. Pumpkin heads, also with accessories. So, obviously, what I do is I have Togi take one pumpkin head, Karmat take the other, and I just have Luke take on Satapio. And that's going to, um,. Actually caused some really boring footage for a little while. I'm sorry, it's just how I play this game. But first we have to climb up some stairs. So that we can cross a bridge over a river. And the set Pio is just gonna wait there until like we get close enough for it to be worth paying attention to us, <laughs> I guess. Bosses tend to do that. Or maybe they don't. And maybe it's just this one. I don't know. Two, four. Two, four. And one, three. Oh, look at that. It's moving already. Never mind. Also, things they take off their head and hit you with it. And they're strong! Jeez! And yet, that didn't hurt the Togi all that much for some reason. Also, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing, like, the random jumbled letters names correctly. I'm just gonna have Luke move out of the way here. Iggs. Oh, 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 do I have them? Um... Yes. Okay. See those yellowed squares? This is actually an area effect magic. And the yellow squares show what creatures will be affected by it. Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll show you. Usually it's the... Monsters on the outskirts of the magic that get more damaged, oddly enough. See? Oh. Yeah, and also, if you kill something with an area effect magic, you don't get the bonus points for it. So I just wasted a lot. I guess I'm just gonna have to have a Togi take care of Santa Pio with me. But first, let me show you XG. It's actually really cool. See, cost is 38 MP. It's like the most powerful low-level magic. But a Togi can't learn it, ever. <laughs> Oddly enough. Also, check out card notes. <laughs> magic casting animation is cute. Yeah, I'm gonna have to have a Toki help with Satapia. And 
And also, another annoying thing about this particular level... Mocha Bean, what the... Glass Mask. Okay, normally both of them give a glass mask, so that you get one for each puppet. But apparently not this time. See, I'm just gonna leave Card Knight behind and have my token follow me. And Sata Piu doesn't really do much, honestly. You in range? You are. I don't want to kill it with the Togi, I just want to level the Togi up some. Of course, 110 health. What? That's too... Oh. Dang it. Yeah, it, it's kind of hard to figure out how the slopes work. This is gonna go nowhere fast. So also if you notice something I was just about to say and then completely forgot about. Eh, I'll think of it. We finally get an attack from it, and it actually kinda hurts. Oh, that reminds me, also, um, healing spells. They actually give you a lot of MP, so I probably could have just had a Togi do that. Um. Also, why can the Togi hit it from up here, but not Luke? Like, you do more damage if you're higher than an opponent, but... Kind of arbitrary. And what is it even throwing anyway? Anyway, I just realized what I think. Um, the creatures, or er, the everything you control in this game, it like cycles automatically. If you finish up with Luke, it automatically brings you to the thing that was Muskew. Once you're done with that, it automatically brings you to the thing that was Powan. And if you're done with pa the thing that was Powan and Luke still hasn't moved, it'll bring you right back to that. There is also, um, I'll show you something next turn. Wait a minute here. Luke being the king, like the chess king, well, the king in a game of chess, also has like another option auto. You can put the puppets on, like, AI control, so that you don't have to do anything with them. I don't think they cast magic if they're on autopilot, but it's kind of silly that they would do that anyway, because there's, like, very little, actually, interactivity, actual interactivity in this game. And it's like, what, this little bit of gameplay is too much for you? Here's a way you can do even less! <laughs> oh dear. I'm dead. I'm so dead. I'm very dead. La -da -da. Okay, that's a random note. Again. Thanks, item. That was helpful. I'm not going to use either of them to heal him because I don't want to get them all unevenly leveled. Alright, 
next turn I'll show you guys one more thing. I won't actually do it, for reasons I'll explain in a second here. But, um... You can... use jewels. If you throw it at an enemy, it attacks with magic. If you throw it at a random spot on the ground, it lays a trap. And if an enemy steps on the trap, it does, like, a huge ton of damage. The thing is, if you attack a creature with magic using a jewel, you don't get any experience for it. At all. Presumably because you're not using your own power, you're using something else. But, still... It's kinda dumb. No, I don't want to move. What the? What are you doing? Dude, you had me on the run. You didn't even show the people your magic casting animation, dang it. Over here. I don't think there's any particular bonus for hitting something from behind either. I've been trying to figure that out. Like, as long as I've been playing this game, I still don't have an answer. Okay. Squawk, squawk. That is called Bolt. That particular magic. next attack will level, level me up, so there will be no need to heal myself. What are you doing? Trying to run into a corner that you literally can't get out of now? Smart. See? Level up. And now all my health is restored. that the annoying thing about this particular room, this particular dungeon, is that there's the bridge and there's literally only one space for you to get across it. Like, it's not even the two spaces of the bridge because there's a tree trunk blocking one of them. So you can just, like, bottleneck. Which is nice in, like, free fighting games like Dark Souls, but in an RPG it's just annoying. Whee! We're done. And now, for some exposition! Remember, we came here looking for the Ring of Domination? It's not here. We found something here anyway. Also, if you look in the left, under the tree that's not in the, like, the left side, but the next one over, at the bottom of it, that brown thing, that is a puppet. That is an unmade puppet, like a puppet without a jewel used to bring it to life. I guess the soul lingers for a little while so that this thing can talk to us. Um, anyway, more expedition. Came here looking for the Ring of Domination. It's not here. We found something anyway. We're not going to be looking for the ring ever again. So that whole item was completely pointless. Anyway, you can tell us the truth behind it all. Again, Luna. <laughs> I love it. Whoops. <laughs> Talk about a plan backfire. for saving everyone's lives. Yeah, that's what humans tend to do.
He already said they were your ancestors. Yeah, the, the, the plot of this game is so... I, I hesitate to say bad, because it could have been awesome. It's just poorly done, as is most of the dialogue. I'm not sure how much of that is stuff lost in translation and how much of that is just originally poorly written dialogue, cheesy dialogue. But you know what? The thing that makes this good is that it doesn't care, basically. <laughs> yeah, Alina doesn't have white hair or red eyes, so she can't make puppets. Funny how the Magical Puppet Masters all, are all albino, but whatever. Bunch of random words, meaning are you going to save the people who destroyed your entire species, basically. And, um... Probably get no thanks for it, again. Ah, but Luke's the noble hero. Gulado. Or is it Gulado? I don't know. Yep. And we now have another magical puppet that we can turn into a puppet. Fun fact, you can actually take a maximum of three magic puppets with you. I only go with the two, just because I didn't even know that until the first few times I played through this game. But yeah, you can actually bring a third. Baptism of Fire. I've always loved that title. I actually used it in some of my writings, too. And we immediately get automatically home. <laughs> Narration! Yeah, I'm surprised that she was reluctant in the first place when she was the first one saying, I think there's something special about us. And Luke was the one who wasn't convinced, but whatever. Yeah, there you go. And now they give us the chance to just not go. <laughs> um. Yeesh. Sorry about that, I'm really just cramping. Um. Hmm. Okay, you know what? Ah. Didn't mean to do that. Yes, I'm gonna show you guys one more thing. So, boss rooms only ever have the boss once. But you can revisit places you've already been. And since there's no, like, town or anything outside this one, we just go straight to the menu. And I'll equip a thing. Well, there increases magic defense, interestingly enough. Not normal. So the boss room is still open. The boss is gone. This is what I meant last time when I was talking about how, like, there are semi-optional rooms or dungeons. This is what we get now. A couple of fairies, a couple of sleeping dream bats, and the two pumpkin heads again. Um... These are called silk, or no, pixies. There are sylph though, somewhere. Um, I'll have Luke kill those. And these are sleepers. <laughs> so yeah, this is the semi-optional dungeon that you can use if you can I 
can. <laughs> Just notice now the pumpkin head kind of splits. Or the pumpkin itself. The, the, the pumpkin that is its head kind of splits when it gets hurt. That's funny. So, yeah. And again, like I said, you can get... Oh, see? Here's an instance of it. Is it sneezing? There's an instance of magic being used from across the river. <laughs> Spinning head. Dixie's teleport. Sleepers fly, obviously. I am suddenly wondering about the wisdom of having done this. Eh, whatever. Anyway, you can actually get any monster you see in this game, and that, and you can also get some that you never see in this game, like fighting. And there are some things that you never see unless you take the like optional post boss fight dungeons. Um, Think of it. I wonder if that's why there was a second room in the uh, Boondocks basement place thing. Okay, I will show you Icicle now. Exactly what it sounds like. For a minute there, I thought that killed it. Oh well. Magic. Take that, you stupid sleeping bat. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle. He's like Elvis. You can move after you attack, obviously. I don't know if I've done that before in this series. Two videos. <laughs> so yeah. Also pixel art. Pixel art is awesome. Whoop. Not <gasps> no. Oh no. Oh my god, those things have healing powers. The other pixie's gonna heal the pumpkin head. Yep. God dang it. I hate it when enemies have healing spells. That is just like the most annoying thing in the world. It is sneezing. Okay. That didn't kill you in one blow? Wow. Alright. Kill this dang pixie. Please. I am begging you. No! And now it's gonna heal itself? Ugh. Now I need to heal myself. Jeez. This was not a good idea. Also, I think how much experience you get for anything depends on the level of whatever you're using the magic or whatever against. So I think using a spell on yourself with like an, a level equivalent to yours, obviously, because it is yours, will get a lower amount. But since I usually have Luke try to be like stronger than thing, um. Healing him normally gives my puppets a lot of experience, which is nice. Oh, no, no, I'm not, I don't want to do that. You are not committed to telling something to do something until you've already made it do something. That makes sense. I'm 
sure it doesn't. Like for instance, I clicked on him, but I can opt out now. Now I've made him move, I can't opt out. Get that treasure chest out of the way because it was in the way and that's annoying. Um, I'm gonna stop giving it the height bonus thing. And let's see. You've seen eggs, an enemy used that before. Yeah. Eh, might as well use eggs. And now there's a dang pixie blocking the way. Uh, oh, and I didn't even kill this thing. Dang it, I am... I am not doing very well right now. I'm so sorry. And I'm also wasting your time. You see, this is now going over an hour. Sorry about that. That's my fault. But at least there's more gameplay in this video. Finally kill one. Thank you. Um, stupid pixies in the way. I'm gonna hope it's going for Luke and try to make it move. Oh! It moved. Nice! Of course, the stupid bat takes its place, but still. <laughs> Just hits me with her wand. See, okay, there is an example of an attack missing. And that noise is the attack miss noise. Sometimes when you strike an enemy, it makes both the strike noise and the miss noise at the same time. I haven't figured out what that means. I, it might be like a glancing blow, but if anything, it seems like doing that does slightly more damage somehow. I, I don't know. This game's weird. That's why I love it. <laughs> the mechanics don't even need to make sense. Also, something else to talk about, I'm not sure if you've noticed. When enemies use magic, it's always the same, like, sort of a dark blue color like that. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Thanks. Pixie. I was about to say that pumpkin's not gonna move, is he? But he did! Nice! And now, I get the height bonus on the pixie. Again, why not? Okay, but when allies use it, it's actually the color of the magic. In addition to that, I'll, I'll show you this next turn. Um, 
In addition to that, um, the four types of magic also have their own particle effects. Like, I think that's holy right there. Could be wisdom, not sure. Oh. <clears throat> that pumpkin head is missing a lot. Must be so nice to have a teleporting creature. Okay, so for instance, this is a beast type magic, and the particle effect here is some like orbs flying out from underneath, and also the symbol around the jewel color is different. It's a nice little touch, I think. It doesn't do anything really. Like I'm, I don't. Again, I don't think there is, like, an element weakness or anything like that. This thing fails at life. <laughs> but, you know, it's a nice little effect. Oh, for a minute I thought it was gonna attack the chest. la di -da. Saying words. Because I'm an idiot. Is this... Yes! Down you go! Right now, let me see. Yeah, Cardinal needs to level up some. Singular stupid chest blocking the way. Not that it's gonna matter, the pixie's probably gonna move back to this side as soon as we're done here. Nope! Can I reach it with magic from here? Nope. Yeah. So you can walk through allies. Why didn't you attack me? You're dumb. Um, let's use a really weak magic. Oh, that's it. Again, beast. Gosh, dang it. Hang on, I'm sorry, I'm gonna jump cat to when I'm down here. BRB. Wait, never mind. Okay, I guess we're just gonna have to do this. It still had enough magic to heal itself, I'm not sure why it didn't. Ugh, now Park Knight's severely overpowered. New skew! Uh, a rice sandwich! It's a step above rice ball. There's the other glass mask. And the third one! Okay, sorry about that. Glad I found things to say. Yeah, Vulado, or the Hall of Dolls, is over here. I'm gonna go back to Gross. I'm gonna call it Gross. There's no way I'm gonna say Gross Kingdom, because that's dumb. Again, not sure if something was lost in translation there or what, but. Eh. a long time to figure out that this was Luke's house.
It is actually kind of easy to get lost, like, in a town, if you're looking for something specific. Since I've already wasted your time, let me waste a little bit more of your time. I mentioned that these things have, like, a... a Pokemon-esque vibe to them. Here's another example of that. It's like a Pokedex, basically. <laughs> it's cute. And pressing X shows you its attack animation, which is neat. You only get them for puppets you have owned. So it operates alone, but it obeys the leader. Also, you can evolve Elekin from one of the yellow jewels. Probably, probably yellow beast jewel using a red jewel, but I evolved it from power because... Yeah. I'm not sure what perverse is supposed to mean here. Also, this is a powered up version of another creature. They do that too, they like read color some animals, or some monsters, to make them into different animals that are like powered up versions of previous ones. Okay, here's the thing that makes me wonder if puppets are always a thing. Even today there seem to be Powan ranches. How is that possible? If the magical puppets are just gone? Oh! <laughs> uh, yeah. That's it. And there are... 169 plus a bunch of bonus ones. So I'm not sure if these are the bonus ones. Quite a bit more than the original set of Pokemon. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, now I've shown you that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. One last thing. Sorry. Here's where you have to go if you want to change the name of a puppet. You can also evolve them here. I'm not gonna do that, I've wasted your time too much. See, species next is the... Er, species, I guess. Next is something else. Huh! I did not know that. I always thought it was a, the option was called species next. Never mind. Wow. Still learning new things. I just like things to be called what they are. I do that in Pokemon too. I don't like to give Pokemon nicknames because their real names kind of describe them. Kind of. Better than any nickname could. Also, I'll, I'll show you this another time. Giving a nickname to a monster is very difficult. You, like, get six or seven characters when you're trying to name something yourself. Which is dumb. But... Oh well. So! Okay, finally done here. Thank you so very much for watching if you did, and if you stopped by now, I understand. I'm so sorry. Um, either way, I look forward to seeing you next time, which will be a video featuring Kingsley's adventure. Uh, so yeah, thank you so very much, and yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.